What up, y'all? This is the No Pigeon Podcast. It's your host, Yucca. I wanted to do a reaction to this. Um, apparently, eight teenage girls in Canada, in downtown Toronto, stabbed a man, a homeless man. So I wanted to react to the news report on that. So let's see where this takes us. Do 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 do. Mm. I'll click on this. First of all, what the fuck is CP News? Like, no judgment, but what the fuck is it? Well, Toronto police are updating the investigation into the fatal stabbing of a man early Sunday morning. Let's go live. A man. On Sunday, the 18th of December, just after midnight, emergency medical services staff were flagged down by a group of individuals who were reporting assault that had just occurred to an individual in and around the area of York and University Avenue. When emergency medical services staff uh, commenced medical intervention, they realized that the victim had suffered what were, what were described as stab wounds. Uh, as a result Oof. of that, that individual was transported to a nearby hospital and unfortunately I wonder how many stabs he got, though, because I, I know women could be vicious, too, but just me imagining a woman stabbing a dude is just, I mean, yeah, it happens. I I had a chick try to stab me before, but I mean, like, just actually, like, you know, I was trying, but actually, like, penetrate, pff, that's rough. He succumbed to his injuries. As the investigation unfolded, it was learned Rest very peace, early man. on that uh, the suspects involved in this were being described as uh, eight young females. And as a result of... What is a female? That's pretty anti-woke that he said that. He does not know what they identify as, so... Hey, man, just saying. Quick work by officers in 52 Division, these females were able to be located and apprehended and were subsequently uh, brought to 52 Division where they... I'm sorry, but this ain't the 80s, the 70s, or the 90s anymore. There's cameras everywhere. Like, if you're going to really do some dirt, um, be a little conscious of that. I mean, I understand they're kids, but even when I was a troublemaking kid, I was still a little conscious and aware of my surroundings. But anyways... They faced a charge and are facing a charge of second-degree murder in relation to the death of a now 59-year-old male who is a resident of Toronto. 60 years old. I cannot release his name at this point because we are, till, we are still taking steps to notify members of his next kin, but we will be releasing it at some time in the future. These eight females um, range in age from 13 to 16, three of them being 13. 13 to 16 stabbed a 60-year-old man. I would have punched that bitch the fuck out. I don't know if he was a fetal, feeble old man or whatever, but that's that's tragic. That's not only is he old enough to be your father, he's old enough to be your grandfather. Like the the cognitive dissonance a lot of these people have, and and the separation from reality that a lot of these these kids nowadays have. It, it's tragic because how do you not see an old man like that and think like this could be my father, this could be my grandfather or whatever, right? But hey, man. I guess it takes them getting stopped. But, but then I guess, hey, women's power, right? <laughs> women's rights. Like, women are the victims, right? So, Three of them being 14 and two of them being 16 years of age. They have already made their first appearance in court. They are remanded into custody and will be returning again on the 29th of December for the next court. Now, knowing the law, they're probably not going to show these kids' faces. But um, if they did, you'd see these motherfucking, these dumb kids just crying in the court. <laughs> Handcuffed, just crying, mama. <laughs> That's how it usually goes down, though, right? Parents. We're seeking the public's assistance in trying to gather as much evidence as possible. Obviously, uh, we have done uh, a video canvas as well as a canvas for uh, witnesses in the and you know you know how easy it would be to investigate that like you really just you take the 13 year old who knows the 13 year old could be the gangster but you take one you take two three of them little girls and you just you cross-examine them you know oh your friend snitched on you this and that these motherfuckers will fold like ikea furniture these motherfuckers will fold in a heartbeat i certify i guarantee you these motherfuckers are not 
holding their alibi certified. Because grown men, there's a lot of grown men that won't even fucking, you know? Area. What we can tell you factually right now is that we believe this group of eight young ladies attended the area at least by 10.30 on the 17th of December. We have information to believe that this same group of eight uh, young women were involved in an altercation earlier before becoming involved in this altercation. So if anyone was in the area... Oh, they're just some wild girls. they just they're fighting everybody. Okay, I see that. ...of York uh, University, Front Street, uh, in that general area sometime after 10 o'clock, 10 p.m. on uh, the 17th into the 18th. We'd like to speak to you if, in fact, you may have had interaction with this group of eight. I think they would be... Uh, easily identifiable because these uh, two interactions involved what would be described as criminal behavior. So if hold up, you're talking about easily identifiable. You, you're not going to say, hey, their height, their measurements, maybe their weight, their race. You already said their gender. Can we find out what their race was? Maybe get a better idea since you're looking for uh, uh, witnesses. But hey, we're about to find out, I guess. If you were a victim or had contact with these individuals, we'd like to hear from you. Oh, shit, this shit is on. Look at this. This shit is on NBC, too. Mm. Mm. Take the questions. So what we've gleaned so far is that these eight individuals from what we... Gleaned? Who the fuck says gleaned? Is that a real word? Y'all mind if I Google this real quick? Quick? Gleaned. Extract information from various sources. Oh, okay. I guess in his profession, he would know that word. I've never heard that word before, but I'm going to start using it. So what we've gleaned so far mm. is that these eight individuals from what we've gathered so far is that they met each other through social media. They okay. come from varying parts of the city. That is to say they are not from one specific geographic location. We don't know how or why they met on that evening and why the destination I don't believe that shit for a second. That sounds like a whole alibi. We all, all eight of us met on social media. Like none of them grow up together. None of them come from the same neighborhood. They just all met from social media. I doubt it, but hey, let's, let's continue. It was downtown Toronto. Uh, we don't know. We don't know how long they've been acquainted together with each other, but I wouldn't describe them as a gang at this point, but what they what they Why not? are alleged to have occurred. Y'all would have called me a gang and my friends a gang when we was kids around the same age. Y'all love to. Y'all love to harass us when we were little kids. Not you specifically, but the police, right? But, hey. That evening would be consistent with what we traditionally call a swarming or a swarming type behavior. Three of them have had prior contact with the Toronto with uh, with police services, but uh, aside from that, the other five have had no contact with police whatsoever. I wonder who were the initiators then. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder. The fifty-nine-year-old victim. Uh, is currently living in the shelter system, but had only been recently moving into the shelter system. So late fall, he'd, he'd gone there. He does have a very supportive family in the area. So, so he a buckty. I wouldn't necessarily call him homeless. Maybe just recently. I mean, he's homeless. You, you don't like the, the negative undertone behind that word. I understand, but he is homeless, right? At 59, you homeless. So that means you ain't doing something right. On, on some hard luck. What, inflation? Trudeau's government? Is that the hard luck he came under? I can tell you that a number of weapons were secured as well, a subject uh, or incident to arrest. I won't get into what those weapons were, but we did, uh, we did secure a number of weapons in, in regards to these individuals. What a bunch of preteens, so I'm guessing pff, just more knives, maybe a stick. You know, it's Toronto. You know these little kids don't got no guns like that. Not like no state shit, so shit costs money. <laughs> when you see the media release, you will see a link uh, that is attached to that media release. That's for anyone that may have any video whatsoever. When you go to that link, 
You can upload any video that you might have and that goes directly to our evidence section. So please have a look at the link. If you have something, please share that with us because we, we would like to get any more information us. available. Thank you. We've been listening to Toronto Police update the media on a fatal stabbing that took that place wasn't, early Sunday. That wasn't an update. What was that? Sunday morning, we are learning that eight female suspects between the ages of 13 and 16 are all facing second-degree murder charges in the stabbing death of a 59-year-old man. Uh, the girls are expected to make a court appearance on the 29th of in Toronto, a fatal attack on a 59-year-old man, allegedly by eight teenage girls, is sending shockwaves through the city and beyond. Is it though? Shockwaves? I hate these fucking reporters and their fucking, uh, <laughs> the words they use, you know? I understand it's all about ratings and such, but it's just corny. Beyond, the CBC's Megan Fitzpatrick has the latest from Toronto Police Headquarters. Well, police say this started unfolding at some point from 10 p.m. onwards uh, and that there may have been a couple of altercations and incidents involving this group of girls. There was this stabbing that happened right at the intersection of York and University. For anyone that's ever gone through Union Station in downtown Toronto, that's around where it happened. Uh, the stabbing happening just after midnight, police say. A 59-year-old man uh, was the victim of stabbing wounds he was brought again rest in peace to 59 you know what i mean like that is that is tragic for him you know who who knows what the fuck he was doing he's probably just chilling you know what i mean huh? who knows he could have been trying to creep on them girls too you don't know what these fucking street dudes but hey brought to hospital and died of his injuries Please i shouldn't speak ill of the dead we don't know that so i take that back i retract that statement my bad He was probably just a good man Police are saying the suspects, as you mentioned, all eight teenage girls, three of them aged 13, three of them aged 14, two of them aged 16, and police uh, apprehended. I'm just curious who's the one that jucked them, though. That's what I'm curious about. And how do you, I don't give a fuck if you 18, 25, let a, a grown woman, like, actually try to stab me? I am breaking her motherfucking jaw. Certified. Please, try me. These suspects, they say, uh, soon after the incident, they all made a brief court appearance on Sunday, and all eight of them have been charged with second degree must murder. Must have been a wheelchair or something. Now, in terms of what we know about the victim. Just for y'all who don't know, second degree murder in Canada is kind of soft. Like, this ain't no uh, U.S., <laughs> this ain't no China charges, you know what I mean? This is, they probably gonna serve two and a half, maybe three. <laughs> Police do know his in, in children's, uh, uh, you know what I mean, identity, uh, but they are not releasing his name publicly, Arthi. Uh, they say they are YDC Youth Detention Center still no notifying the man's next of kin. I just spoke with a detective working on the case. He says the victim has elderly parents. They don't want them to find out about uh, the death of their son through the media, and they are attempting to contact uh, those family members still. Uh, but the uh, Toronto police are making an appeal to the public for their help with this case, saying they believe they're... Honestly, that's tragic, though. That's tragic for his family, because like me or anybody who has family on the streets like that, on drugs or whatever the fuck, homeless, in the back of your mind, you're always like, fuck, I didn't... Like, when is the day that I get this call that this motherfucker is dead, croaked on a fucking corner in an alleyway, frozen to death or some weird shit, you know? Fucking stomped out and fucking in a coma or some shit you it's always in the back of your mind right so like i understand and i feel bad for his family you know yeah so i'm assuming he must have been on some kind of drugs because if he wasn't they probably would have brought him into their house right but if it was a serious conflict then maybe not but he was 59 so they could have had their own families and just probably couldn't deal with all that shit right now so there may have been interactions with other victims, possibly other people in Toronto in the area that evening with the group of girls. So they're asking people to come forward if they think they may have seen them or interacted with these suspects. Here's more from the detective. If they had any contact with these eight individuals themselves. Hey, that's that same motherfucker. That's uh, uh, Bleen. Gr Glean. What was, what was that word? Glean. Isn't that him? I think Perhaps so. They were victimized or they observed behavior that caused... I see the him or one of uh, the dude from uh, Sharon Lois and Bram. Y'all remember that? ...caused them some concern. We would really like to hear from them because we're really trying to track the 
whereabouts of these eight individuals when we first know that they were there, which is at 10.30 around Saturday, but we may be mistaken. They may have been down there earlier. He also said they believe, perhaps, uh, that the girls met through social media. Oh, um, and they are, are following that as a possibility, aren't they? Because they don't believe there are any other sort of... Um... Wow. So why are you following that? Just find out what the fuck happened. Like, what? Y'all are following how they met. Why do you, why do you give a fuck how they met? Unle unless you have a suspicion that they, they're part of some greater internet cult or some shit, some stabbing community or something like that off of Reddit, some Reddit uh, 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 stab or whatever the fuck. Why are you even pursuing that? Look up. Try to just get to the bottom of the fucking case. Uh, connections between the girls. They say that these suspects lived in different parts of the city, so they uh, didn't have any other uh, known connections at this point, the detective is saying. So they are, are pursuing the theory that these girls may have connected with each other through social media, but that is so all part what? of the investigation. Uh, detectives saying is yesterday it? as well that they did see... Really? Y'all gonna glean that? Y'all gonna glean that, that, that social media part? Fuck out of here. A number of weapons from these suspects. Again, these uh, eight accused teenage girls remain in custody and another court hearing is scheduled for next week. Now, Megan, this has shocked many people in the city. What sort of reactions are you hearing? Yeah, it certainly is. Um, and we have heard reactions. Again, with the shock and the resonating through the waves of crime wave of the city and you know, hitting all of Canada coast to coast. Get the fuck out of that fucking host. I can't stand it. But I understand. They're all told what to say. So. From Toronto's mayor, John Tory, who put out a statement yesterday saying he's deeply disturbed by this story. Also expressing who did, who his deeply disturbed? put out a statement yesterday. Um, and we have heard reaction from Toronto's mayor, John Tory, who put out a statement yesterday. Bring back Mr. Ford. What was his name? Rest in peace. Was it Rob Ford? Bring him back. Rest in peace. Saying he's deeply disturbed by this story. Also expressing his condolences to the victim. Uh, police, by the way, saying that uh, the individual was who, who was killed recently had started using Toronto's shelter system. Um, they believe he was a resident of Toronto, but just this past fall had started staying in some of the city's shelters. We are here. Just for y'all who don't know, Canada is cold as fuck right now. So for this man, I don't know how cold that is in Toronto, but here in Calgary, it is fucking negative 40 degrees Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. I think it's probably like a negative eight or some shit, but it's rough right now. I wish I could take this camera and just show you all the streets because I don't even want to. That's why I'm podcasting right now. I don't even want to be on the streets right now. I got I got groceries to grab, but I'm staying home, you know? All right. Hearing reaction from people who work in in uh, shelters and for organizations that help people experiencing homeless. Here's what the homelessness. Here's what the uh, director of the Fred Victor Center told CBC. Fred Victor, who that? Doesn't ha often happen in our. Ah, uh... Somali, Deja Farah. She is a Somali. Um, in our country, and it's something that. Uh, it becomes shocking. Sadly, assault and violence against homeless people is 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 a daily occurrence. But that level of violence. The other way around too to play devil's advocate. These motherfuckers. You know what I mean? Let's be real, man. <laughs> violence is something new and 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 concerning. And I think the detective I just More spoke to ladder. saying this should shock people that this is a shocking and surprising story. Uh, it is not surprising that a lot of people in Toronto are talking about this today. That is the CBC's Megan Fitzpatrick in Toronto. Hey, man, I mean, like, that's fucking tragic for that dude that he lost his life. Like, it really is, like, and I, I feel bad. I feel bad for him. I feel bad for his family and all of that. But it's just, like, my real question is, how is the Canadian government going to polit uh, politicize this, right? Because they kept pushing. They really pushed to get rid of our firearms, you know? And when I watched... When I watched Trudeau on stage talk about, I, I applied because I always thought I wouldn't get approved. I always felt like, oh, I can't get a gun license. Like something's going to happen. They're going to come for me or whatever. I, I don't know what the fuck I was thinking, right? But I finally applied around August. I'm still waiting. I applied for my firearm and my unrestricted. So like the rifles and shotguns and stuff. And while I'm waiting, they just banned firearm. They banned uh, uh, restricted ha handguns, right? So I can't even get that shit no more. I paid for the motherfucker, but I can't even get it no more, right? And when I saw Trudeau on stage trying to justify it, 
this motherfucker was bringing cake because you know in Canada like, we do have gun violence, but it's nowhere near the U.S. So this motherfucker was bringing back cases that happened 14, 15 years ago. You know what I mean? To really justify it. You know what I mean? And all you're doing is taking the gun out of people that are law-abiding citizens, taken out of their hands, because these motherfuckers in the street, they don't get their guns legally. You know what I mean? <laughs> they're, they're always going to have the guns. You're know, always going to have the guns. What you're doing is you're, 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 you're not allowing law-abiding citizens to protect themselves, you know? So... And it's crazy because in Canada, if, if if someone comes in your house and you shoot them, you could you could, you know what I mean, charged with murder. You could be charged with murder just because, whatever the fuck, right? They have every restriction, every fucking restriction to to um for your gun and and how you hold it. And like, I understand some of it's safety, but I don't know. I'd rather be in the south. I'd rather be in an open carry state where motherfuckers don't really want to fuck with you because they know you strapped the fuck up, right? Whereas you go to London and these motherfuckers will stab you to death. So my question is, how are they going to politicize this one? What are they going to ban knives? Hmm? They're going to ban a whole section of Ikea and Superstore and Walmart. They're going to ban a whole kitchen. Come on now, right? Humans are always going to find a way to harm each other. But what you're doing by removing firearms is you're making it for the weaker to be more vulnerable, right? Say, say, hypothetically speaking, they got rid of uh, knives, right? Because we already can't have, like, brass knuckles or nothing like that, but, or, or firearms now, too, right? But say they got rid of all guns and all knives. So you got a woman and you got a big man. And the woman has no way to defend herself because now we're talking about brute force. Brute. A lot of y'all don't realize how brutal men can be, right? So, um... Yeah, man. At the end of the day, I feel humans should have the right to defend themselves legally. You know what I mean? Without the threat of uh, going to prison because you defended your own life. You know what I mean? Because if if Trudeau wants to keep that same energy, how about you? How about you? You 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 dearm your 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 protection, right? How about you stop selling uh, hundreds of millions of dollars of arms to Saudi Arabia? Who's, do, who's doing an illegal war in Yemen? How about that? But y'all, y'all don't want to do that, huh? That's why... This guy's spineless. Trudeau is spineless, right? Y'all seen uh, uh, President Xi Jinping or whatever from China? Y'all seen him get at him? If not, I recommend you go check that video. He got at his ass. Why Why you Why you talk what we say in private in front of everybody? I tell you in private. You keep it that way. To the, oh, you know, I feel like he tried to get all political. I feel like we, you know, we should tell the people because he knew he was on air. That's why I, feel, I bet you behind closed doors, you already know Xi Jinping had that same. He he could feel the energy off of him that he wasn't. You know what I mean? He wasn't going to tell. But he, this motherfucker's a politician at the end of the day, just like his father was. Right. So with that, I rest my case. It's been a good time with y'all. Like and subscribe. If you guys have any views or ideas or opinions on this video, comment, please. And yeah, till the next one. Peace. The No Pigeons Podcast.